Today, we're digging into social media success and failure, and we're talking ways to schedule our lives so we don't meet burnout. Author and podcast host Susie Moore is here today. She's been an advice columnist on Oprah, Cosmopolitan, Good Morning America, and more. And she's the author of Let It Be Easy, Simple Ways to Stop Stressing and Start Living. Let's face it, we could all live with less burnout. This is Advocate Now. so great to have you with us. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, first, let's start out by giving social media its due credit. How can it be an incredible resource for connectivity? Social media is actually a very neutral tool. It's up to us whether it's healthy or unhealthy based on our own personal use of it. Yeah, and with the good always comes some of the bad. So from <laughs> Selena Gomez to Sarah Hyland, there has been a trend of celebrities taking a hiatus from social media for a more peaceful and less judgmental life. Why do you think that is? I think it's extremely healthy when we take breaks from anything that is really trained to be addictive. Like social media you know, apps and platforms are designed to really be sticky, to hold our attention. And it's very easy just to get caught up in that and spend hours of your day looking at other people's lives, paying attention to what's going on out there versus really focusing on ourselves. So when we have that healthy disconnect, a temporary or long-term break, we're able just to come back to our own center. And like with anything else, it's great and healthy to have breaks if something just feels like it takes up a lot of time in your life and mental space. And I think that celebrities who do this model it very well for the rest of us. Yeah, absolutely. And back in 2016, even Kim Kardashian took a break for three months after she was robbed in France. Mm -hmm. so why do you think keeping up with constant posts and stories causes us even more stress? There is no, I mean, it's not a lie. It is a fact that it can be dangerous, especially if you have a lot of followers or it only takes one or two followers who may not have good intentions for you for there to be a real risk when you expose where you are. So I know that personally, me and my friends, if we even add a location, we'll tag it later after we've already left. There are basic kind of safety rules that apply because you never know. The internet is a weird place, right? It can be. You never know who's watching. So creating your own parameters and making sure that you're managing your own safety can also alleviate a lot of stress because out there, you never really know. But the good news is we're in control of our social media use. We're in control of what we post and what we don't post. Always just come back to the truth that our social media use and what it is that we choose to share is our decision and that we have the power. You know, and there, there are body image comparisons, mm -hmm. the constant current news, stream of news online. How does social media affect our well-being in terms of all of that? So this is where our own relationship to what we consume has to be the focal point. It's so easy to even use passive language, like, you know, I just get sucked in to the scroll hole. I just get, you know, sucked into the newsfeed. We don't have to get sucked in. No one's forcing you putting a phone in your hand going, look, look, look. I know, you know, these tools, as we said, are, are created to be addictive, but the boundaries and the parameters that we create are up to us. And if something makes you feel bad, stop looking at it. If you don't see it, it can't bother you. <laughs> and this is the control that we have, which sometimes we abdicate or we, we just simply forget. Speaking of creating boundaries, I mean, what are some tangible ways that we, especially as women, can make social media less stressful and turn it into a more positive outlet in order to live better lives? Oh, I love this question. Well, why not just limit your use per day? It's proven that the average American spends, what, over two hours a day on social media. That is a lot of hours over the course of a lifetime. And we say, you know, I haven't got time to learn the language or I haven't got time to clear out my closet or I haven't got time to reconnect with an old friend. Creating time limits per day, even just 30 minutes, that's plenty of time for consumption. And follow account, I mean, it's, it's simple but easily overlooked. Follow accounts that make you feel good. If something's making you feel heavy or inadequate or as if you're behind or you're not good enough, limit your visibility to it. We're, we are able to do this with a simple click. And I personally only want to follow accounts that uplift me, that make me laugh. And I enjoy social media as a tool for entertainment and sometimes even learning new skills and seeing what my friends are up to. And this is up to us. Our relationship with anything in our life is determined by how we, how we allow it in and our own intention for its use.
So what happens to our mental wellness when we take these social media hiatuses like some celebrities have been doing? It can be thrilling. If you've never done one, if you've never even had, say, a 72-hour break, three days off, you might find yourself even having what's called phantom phone syndrome, where, you know, if you're waiting for the elevator or if you're waiting for the pasta to boil quickly, you know, we, we honestly, uh, the first step is to just, in earnest, go to our, our app, you know, our app, scroll, see what's up, see what's up. If there's a TV commercial, we go and we see what's up. What if we just took a breath? What if we're like, ah, this is the moment where I'd normally reach for my, you know, my Instagram or check TikTok. Instead, I'm going to take a breath, be present, and maybe even think of something you're grateful for in that moment, like warm air, like your comfy sofa, like the lovely dinner you have planned that evening, like, you know, noticing your dog sleeping on the carpet. When we have these small breaks that where something's removed from our experience, it can allow us to enjoy and see the world in a different way. And it doesn't have to be forever. And by the way, no one's even going to miss you. Sometimes we think, <laughs> oh, if I'm not posting, like, oh, you know, terrible things will happen or people will worry where I am. Whenever I've had breaks, no one's even noticed. And do you even notice if someone has a break? It's allowed. It's appropriate. It's healthy. Why not try it? Just three days, even over the course, perhaps, of a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and see what comes up. See what else there is space for in your life. You have to know that social media is not reality. <laughs> you have to take it with a pinch of salt, good or bad, uh, pictures of vacations, pictures of what people are purchasing, pictures, oh my gosh, private jets, we see it all. Remember that that is like really a 5% window into that person's life. It is the best part. It's highly skewed. And when I always just come back to this truth, remembering this, it, very little is triggering. I know that it's a window. It's a small aspect of someone's reality. And when we just keep that in mind, too, we can have more fun with the experience and not compare our lives so consistently. Because if we're honest, too, probably the stuff that we post is our best 5% too. So just keeping that dose of perspective just really goes a long way and allows these tools that can feel harmful or stressful to actually just be fun, entertaining, and informative. Yeah, and in addition to the comparison, we put so much evaluation on likes and comments. It's sad, but it's true. But how do likes and comments contribute to the need of our social media approval and our, our self-worth? Mm. It's a funny thing, isn't it, when we we look at a number of likes or we, we look at comments and we think that that means something about our own worthiness. I often joke, you know, if aliens came to Earth and saw us on our phones looking for hearts and words on a screen <laughs> and, ha and having that be how we evaluate how important we are, or how special we are, they would fly off planet Earth and go, that's a strange place. <laughs> what, what people are doing with their lives, that's a strange thing to do. So likes comments engagement is fun and again if it if you're enjoying it if it brings you you know some some joy some laughter that's one thing but if uh, you know a lack of likes or very few comments means that you feel bad about yourself this is when we need to just come back to the truth and and look you know and really ask the question if i have 11 likes or 33 likes does this have any impact on who i am as a person <laughs> or my future or how skilled and lovable i am we, have, we, we can't just accept uh, maybe a lack of engagement or a few likes on a post. We, we can't accept that as meaning anything about us. The way that we interpret what happens is entirely our decision. And if something is posted and it's, you know, there's less engagement, that's interesting. Move on. There are plenty of posts in your future. Keep it moving. Absolutely. I love <laughs> Instagram hid the likes. There, there's now a way that you can hide how many likes that a post gets. Why mm -hmm. should we be utilizing that feature for our mental wellness? I, I, I quite like this feature. I feel as if we're more honest in what we post because we're less conscious about, you know, the, the, the public likes that we receive. I would always just come back to this, you know, features change, product, product updates happen all the time. Choose and select what makes you feel good. If you like looking at your likes, if that data feeds your business, for example, and you know that people are really engaged in this one topic, maybe less than another, that's just useful data. So when you come back to this, you're allowed to just be far more lighthearted about about all of your interaction on social media, counts or no counts, you know, it, it's entirely up to you, but it can be nice. It can be a nice break and, and refreshing to be able to eliminate the count if, if that does stress you out. Amazing, such great information, Susie. Thank you so much. And for more wellness advice, tune into Susie's podcast, Let It Be Easy with Susie Moore. Susie, thanks so much for joining us.